News at Noon starts now. It is NFL Draft Week and we have your complete forecast. There's a chance of rain that could impact the event. We'll let you know when the best chance of showers is. After more than a year of planning, the week is finally here. The NFL Draft kicks off in front of Union Station in just three days. We have your guide to navigating Midtown to get in on all the action. Well, thanks so much for joining us at noon. I'm Jamie Weiss. It's officially NFL Draft Week. In just three days, round one is going to kick off in front of hundreds of thousands of fans spread out in front of Union Station and the National World War One Memorial Lawn. Crews are wrapping up work on the draft stage. News Chopper 9 flew over it this morning to check out what things are looking like right now. The NFL says this is the biggest stage ever built for a draft and KCI's new terminal is going to be getting a major test this week. An estimated 300,000 people are going to be coming to Kansas City for the NFL draft. KBC 9's Andy Alcock joins us live at the airport with a look at one major challenge ahead. Andy. Jamie, that challenge is airport pickups. Now, it used to be here at KCI there were three terminals, but now with only one, there's one general area to pick people up. Take a look behind me and you can kind of see the line sort of, sort of developing here. And it has been problematic in the past. Our Cody Holyoke was out here late Saturday night when there was a significant backup. That line went all the way out the entrance and down nearly to where the rental car drop off and pickup is at Paris Street. People picking up passengers are encouraged to use the cell phone lot until your passenger or passengers are out at the curbside. Now we spoke to Justin Meyer with the airport authority just a few minutes ago who tells us there is more enforcement out here at the pickup area. They have several police officers out here. Uh, additionally, some people helping move the traffic along and they are ticketing. So if you sit here too long or you leave your vehicle, you can absolutely get a ticket for doing this. Now Meyer also tells us that they are expecting definitely more people Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the peak days of people coming in for the draft. On a normal day, we're looking at maybe 16,500 arrivals. He's looking at roughly about 18,000, so another 1,000 to 1,500 people. On the plus side, he does expect a lot of the people coming in will actually be across the street on the other area where the commercial pickup is, as opposed to people coming here in the general pickup area, which should help this line dramatically. Reporting live at KCI, Andy Alcock, KMBC 9 News. All right, thanks, Andy. To kick off draft week, NFL Green is teaming up with several local groups to plant dozens of trees. Earlier today, volunteers planted 25 trees along the walking path at Dunbar Park. The trees will provide shade, beauty, environmental and health benefits to the park on Kansas City's east side. Residents in the Dunbar neighborhood say planting more trees is a priority to them. Kansas City has long had an issue with life expectancy and unfortunately residents that live in this area have limited life expectancy and somewhere up to 20 years life expectancy difference and the the benefit or the impact that that these trees will have will in, will uh, decrease the incidence of asthma will help with copd and other ailments that are plagued in this area so this is one of a number of community greening initiatives that have been planned around town this week Right now, crews are working to get the entire city cleaned up, especially things like roadside trash ahead of the draft. MoDOT is bringing in extra help from around the state just to clean up along the highways. City leaders are also hiring an outside contractor. And again, the main focus of the cleanup is the area surrounding downtown. Now, if you do plan to attend the draft this week, there are some things you need to know. Our Rob Hughes joins us now to break it down. There are a few things NFL officials want you to know. If you plan on coming down to the National World War I Museum and Memorial and Union Station for the draft day experience. Now, the first thing is you have to have a clear bag only, just like you would do at Arrowhead. The second is they want you to download that NFL One Pass. Very, very important. And lastly, they want you to know before you go. They want you to do your homework, do some research, make sure you know where to park and know where you're going to make everything a lot easier for you. But NFL officials say the entire NFL draft day experience is a great way to celebrate Kansas City on the world stage. You can see the fandom in this community and how excited they are. And it's it's just really a great opportunity to showcase Kansas City on a global stage. This is global media, global attendees, an international audience, and we're just excited to open our doors. And regardless of whether or not rain is in the forecast, remember they're going to have the event rain or shine. However, bring a poncho because you can't bring an umbrella. 
In Kansas City, Missouri, I'm Rob Hughes, KMBC 9 News. Okay, really good advice there. And something else to keep in mind this week, make sure you check Union Station social media or website if you plan to take a train or just walk around because all of Union Station's attractions like Science City and the Planetarium, they're closed today. They'll remain closed through the 30th of April. Everything else inside Union Station will be closed on Wednesday, the 26th through the 29th. And then the entire building itself is just going to close on Thursday. So here's what you need to know if you're taking a train into or out of KC from Wednesday through the remainder of the week. There will be a pickup and drop off point on West 25th Street. That's between Jefferson and West Penway Street. An accessible shuttle service will be provided to and from the station. Keep in mind though, parking will not be available at Union Station for anyone. So if you are an Amtrak rider, you need to park at this new location. The National World War One Memorial and Museum is closed today. It'll remain closed through Wednesday. It will open back up for some hours Thursday through Saturday. Keep in mind it costs $20 to get in. This includes the exhibitions, the restrooms, museum store, and the cafe. You will also need the NFL One Pass app in order to enter because the NFL draft itself is free. You just need to scan that QR code to get in. If you or a loved one uses a wheelchair or a walker or you have any questions about how to get around the draft, you can get in touch with the Drafts Mobility Hotline. You can call 1-800, excuse me, 1-888-745-1455, that number there on your screen, or you can email nfldraftmobility at gmail.com. That way you can get all of your questions answered before the draft. Again, as Rob mentioned, now is the time to download the NFL One Pass app. It's going to give you access to parking information, tickets to the fan experience, and all the attractions and activities scheduled for the week. It's free to download. When it comes to the NFL Draft, KMBC 9 is going to have more coverage than anyone else. We have everything to get you ready for the big event, which you can only watch here on Channel 9. Our Kansas City welcomes the NFL Draft Specials. Start tonight. They'll air every night at 630. We're taking you behind the scenes at the big event. You'll meet the local hopefuls, find out which prospects the Chiefs may be targeting. And if you're a sports fan or not, we're also going to help you navigate downtown and the areas you'll want to avoid. Tune in for special draft week coverage starting at 630 tonight. And then stay tuned for live analysis after the draft and KMBC 9 News at 10 o'clock. At 1207, we do want to check in with First Alert Weather anchor Chad Crilly because all eyes are on Kansas City, especially later on this week, Chad. They definitely are. And we'll start with the good news is we're not going to be dealing with a ton of rain all week long, but there is going to be the opportunity for some scattered showers starting as soon as tonight. Not happening yet. There's a live look from our city view camera. Kind of a milky sky as some high clouds start to roll in. Temperatures are not terrible. In fact, most of us are starting off warmer compared to where we were say 24 hours ago or so. So city view camera shows clear skies right now. Some clouds will start to roll in here over the next little while. Temperatures are running anywhere from about five to say 15 degrees warmer than where we were yesterday. Notice 13 degrees warmer in Odessa, 11 in Lee Summit. And as we look at the clouds and radar, you're going to see some of those clouds out across central Kansas starting to roll in for us. And really, as we go through the next couple of hours into this evening, we'll see more clouds and the chance for a couple of showers probably after 8 o'clock or so. Temperatures dropping into the low 50s by 11. We're back in a few minutes with a full look at your forecast, including that NFL draft forecast. All right, looking forward to that. Thanks, Chad. Today, the Excelsior Springs man accused of kidnapping and rape is going to be back in court. Timothy Haslett Jr. is charged with holding a woman against her will and sexually assaulting her for weeks inside of his Excelsior Springs house. He's due for a hearing in Clay County at 1.30 this afternoon. If convicted, Haslett faces up to five years, five life sentences, excuse me, plus 36 years. Tonight, Lawrence School Board members will be discussing how to move forward after voting to close two schools. Last month, the board voted to close Broken Arrow and Pickney Elementary Schools at the end of this school year. Members made that decision because of a multi-million dollar budget shortfall. Tonight, they'll discuss changing boundaries for the remaining elementary schools to accommodate students from Pickney and Broken Arrow. They'll also have a plan to talk about a possible four-day school week for students. That meeting will start at 6 tonight at district headquarters. Coming up next at noon with hundreds of thousands of fans packing into KC for the NFL draft, the traffic situation is going to be less than ideal. We'll share a cheap alternative to driving to the draft. Honored as the Station of the Year in Kansas and the Station of the Year in Missouri, KMBC 9 News, leading the way.
We are just a little over three days out from the NFL draft and spectators are coming from all over the country, even the world. So with hundreds of thousands of visitors expected, one thing's for certain, getting to the NFL draft at Union Station's not going to be easy. One option you might want to consider are e-bikes. They're available to rent through the Ride KC bike app. There's close to 200 e-bikes across the city to help people get as close to Union Station as possible. They're pretty cost effective too. Each ride costs less than 15 cents a minute. So we anticipate people coming from as far south as Waldo Brookside area, from as far east as, say, um, historic northeast um, and, and other parts of the city, simply because e-bikes make it easier to go further, higher and longer. You can download the Ride KC bike app to find an e-bike close to you. It's also free in your app store. The next up police have a warning for anyone who rides a motorcycle because they're seeing more motorcycles get stolen, mostly from apartment complexes. There are a few ways that you can protect your bike. This includes installing alarms, grip locks, disc locks or immobilizers. Police say it's also a good idea to use a chain or a cable to tie your bike to a post or pillar. You should also make sure to use the handlebar steering lock and always park your motorcycle in a well lit area. When it's time for a new car, the choice between buying and leasing can be tough. KMBC 9's Donna Pittman and Consumer Reports have some tips to decide which option will get you the best deal. Oscar Pagan says buying a car this past January was a no-brainer. The option to own is always better, in my opinion, than to lease because at least you have an asset and if anything ever happens, you can sell that asset. But deciding whether to buy or lease your next car can be a tough decision. And with today's higher car prices, the average price paid for a new car is nearly $50,000. And higher interest rates above 6%, you're likely looking at bigger monthly payments no matter which you choose. Consumer Reports says on the surface, leasing can be more appealing than buying. First, it's always under warranty. Second, you're always driving a car with the latest safety features. And third, if you're working part-time in the office and part-time at home, you're not driving as much. So that means you probably won't exceed the lease's uh, limits on how many miles you can drive. Monthly payments are usually lower with a lease because you're not paying for the full value of the car. That means you may be able to drive a more expensive vehicle than you would normally be able to afford. While that might sound appealing, there's one hard fact about leasing. At at the end of the term, you'll have to return the car because you don't own it. A major downside of leasing is that you have an endless cycle of paying for a car. You're never without a car payment because as soon as the one lease is up, you have to either buy a car or get into another lease. It's difficult to make a fair head-to-head -head comparison, but in general, two back-to-back three-year leases will always cost more compared with buying and owning a car over the same period because the buyer owns an asset, the vehicle, after that period. If you do choose to buy your next car, CR says that there are some easy ways to save. Don't rely on the dealer for the best loan. Instead, check if your bank or local credit unions offer lower rates. And if your heart isn't set on a specific make and model, shop around for financing incentives that might be offered by manufacturers. And don't forget, even if you choose to lease, you should still negotiate the price of the car in terms of the deal. Donna Pittman, KNBC 9 News. After what felt like forever, the Kansas City Current were finally back at home yesterday. The team hosted the Orlando Pride, and a lot was on the line as the Current fought for its first regular season win. Mace in the box for Dabinia. Dabinia strikes! After a scoreless first half, Kansas City kicks into gear. Haley Mace had two assists for the game. The first happened when Dabinia scores, and then Mace passes to former Blue Valley Northwest star Cece Kaiser with a goal. Final score 2 0. The current get a W. Really, really proud. Of course, to be honest, I, I know that they were really tired before the game because we have been playing two tough games. That was a lot in eight days, and I know bodies are tired, but we're here to get our recovery in and uh, look to our next game, which is Gotham. The Currents' next game is Sunday, April 30th at home against New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. Kickoff is at 5 o'clock. The Missouri Sports Hall of Fame honors sports stars for achievements on and off the field in the Show Me State. Yesterday marked this year's induction ceremony. One of the inductees was Kansas City Royals legend Lorenzo Cain. Lorenzo played on two of the Royals World Series winning teams. Series teams, I should say. He won it all in 2015. He's now retired from baseball and will be retiring as a Kansas City Royal. He'll be returning to the K on May 6th for a special ceremony and he says he may shed a tear. Do you know that people miss you a lot? 
I've, I've kind of got whispers that they miss me, and um, trust me, it's, it's reciprocated, and I'm, I'm def that's, that's why I wanted to come back here and uh, retire as a Kansas City Roy because, like I said, I've never felt so much love and respect from, from, from the fan base from the city. Well, another inductee is very near and dear to our hearts. KMBC 9's Karen Kornacki was also honored among the best of the best. Karen's been covering the biggest sports moments and interviewing the biggest sports legends in Kansas City for more than three decades. She began her career when many female journalists were not sports journalists. She's a pioneer that paved the way for so many. I didn't want to just make a living when I got into this business. I wanted to make a difference. And knowing that other people want to do what I do because of that, there are no words to explain how much that means. We are just so proud of Karen. And besides Lorenzo Kane, Muna Lee, Carl Peterson, Matt Belzer, and several others joined Karen. They are now enshrined in the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. Just a, truly a huge accomplishment. Karen is always so kind, so gracious. I always love hearing her stories, Chad, just about her time covering sports in Kansas City. And I know she, like many of us, are gearing up for the NFL draft this week. Yeah, that's right. And we are talking about the weather because, of course, it is going to play a role in how things play out, especially if you're planning on being out outside watching some of the events going on, which many of us are. So let's talk about the forecast for Thursday, the first day of the draft. Partly cloudy skies here around dinner time, 5 p.m. Near the start of the draft, you're cool and dry. Temperatures in the upper 50s. And then as you're heading home or maybe staying for the Fallout Boy concert, temperatures low 50s, and we're looking at mostly cloudy skies. So I think Thursday actually is trending drier. It will be one of the driest days of this upcoming work week. Piece of good news. Live look outside right Right now from our city view camera some higher clouds starting to roll in kind of a milky sky at 60 degrees we have winds out of the southwest at 11 miles per hour with some gusts up to 22 miles per hour that breeze out of the south is going to warm us up later today we're already starting off warmer this afternoon compared to yesterday afternoon it is 60 in olathe 62 in paola on the kansas side low 60s here in missouri as well 60 in odessa 61 in warrensburg and some upper 50s in Chillicothe this afternoon. How does the rest of your Monday play out? Well, mostly cloudy skies. I think through the dinner time hour temperatures in the mid 60s. So again, warmer and then after dark, there's going to be a slight chance of showers. It's primarily north of Interstate 70 and it will be breezy from time to time as well. So Monday through Thursday, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies. There will be on and off showers throughout the week, but far from a washout until we get to Friday and Saturday. That's when periods of rain are likely some of that that rain could be widespread at times and overall we're looking at cooler than normal temperatures so it is sort of a chilly damp week for some of us. We're talking about Friday as I mentioned a moment ago that's our best opportunity for widespread rain into Saturday of course the draft taking place during this time as well so let's get an early look at future scan we'll put it into motion and stop it for you as a frontal boundary works through Friday, 5 o'clock in the evening, light to moderate rain ongoing across eastern Kansas and western Missouri. So as you're heading out, rain jacket is going to be needed for the draft. Of course, as mentioned earlier on, can't bring an umbrella. So the rain gear will definitely be necessary. Some of these showers continuing. Watch that counterclockwise spin with a low pressure as it pulls south of us into Saturday. There's your nine day forecast temperatures here again, cooler than normal, low to mid 60s afternoon shower to the north today, passing shower tomorrow, maybe some showers into our Wednesday night, early Thursday morning draft looks dry, better chance of rain on Friday and Saturday, and then we look sunny for Sunday into Monday of next week. All right, appreciate the heads up. Thanks, Chad. Kicking off NFL Draft Week with a special event for our hometown heroes. Next at noon, we'll show you the fun from Sunday's Salute to Service event. The business of the draft is going to be on display this week, but there's some fun to be had. We'll explain how you can party it up with some big names this week.
The NFL kicked off draft festivities yesterday with its salute to service event. The league welcomed hundreds of local military families and veterans to Arrowhead, and they got to take a tour of the stadium and meet some Chiefs legends. The league also packed moving kits to help local vets who were moving into temporary or permanent housing. The NFL Salute to Service is our year-round commitment to honor, honoring, empowering, and connecting with service members, veterans, and their families. And that's what you see out here outside of Arrowhead Stadium. Some of the special guests included Casey Wolf, the Chiefs cheerleaders, and Hall of Famer Bobby Bell. Well, this Friday, as the draft is in full swing, you can party with Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey over in Kansas. Just head over to Bonner Springs. You gotta fight for your right! It's almost time for Kelsey Jam at Azura Amphitheater. Machine Gun Kelly, Loud Luxury, Rick Ross, and Kansas City's Tech 9 will perform. Keep in mind, tickets are 95% sold out at this point, so there's only a few remaining. You're going to need to act fast if you're interested. Tickets start around $50 a piece. Starting on Thursday, there will be three concerts taking center stage at the draft stage outside Union Station. Thursday is Fall Out Boy, Friday is Motley Crue, Saturday is Thundercat, and all of these concerts are free. They will be at the Draft Theater in front of Union Station. So again, to get to these free concerts, you need that NFL Draft registration through that One Pass app. This week, football fans from all over the country are going to be getting a taste of Kansas City's famous barbecue. Q39 is the official barbecue of the draft. On Saturday, local pitmasters are going to be competing in an NFL draft smoke show. It'll be on the North Lawn. Teams include Gates, Slabs Barbecue, Joe's Jack Stack, and more. Retired Chiefs player Mitchell Schwartz will be hosting that event. Since the NFL draft is bringing hundreds of thousands of visitors to Kansas City, let's show them what we're all about. We want to see your favorite sports related photos. We're calling it Hit Me With Your Best Shot. All you have to do is submit your best shots from high school, college, Chiefs, Royals games, any type of sport. We want to see your pictures. Just upload those photos to KNBC.com slash best shot. We will show some of our favorites on First News all week long. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real lit. Real lit indeed. It's NFL Draft Week and Kansas City is on the clock. We'll show you all the weekend work to get ready for that first pick. I'm Martin Augustine and one of the big questions leading up to the NFL Draft is where am I going to park? I'll show you.
committed to serving the residents of Kansas and Missouri. KNBC 9 News, leading the way. Well, thanks for sticking with us at noon. I'm Jamie Weiss. Chad Crilly is here with your first alert forecast, and I think everyone needs to know what is the weather like Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Because, you know, there's like something happening in Kansas City this weekend. You may oh, just a little something. Just a little something <laughs> happening this week. You know, there's good news and bad news, Jamie. And Hi. we'll start with the good news is Thursday afternoon and evening will probably be the driest time period over the next five to six days. The bad news is we are going to be tracking the potential for some rain moving in Friday and Saturday, and some of it could be widespread. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. But first, live look from our City View camera over KC. It's not a bad day for us. Temperatures now at 60 degrees. These are high clouds that are starting to roll in. Southwest wind at 11 miles per hour. That is a warming wind. We're finding some gusts to 22 miles per hour. It is 58 degrees in Chillicothe, 55 in Trenton, two of our cooler spots. 60 in the metro, 60 in Olathe, 62 Paola. Little warmer as you get to Ottawa at 66 degrees. I don't think any of us will touch 70 today, but a few locations could get pretty close. Notice where the clouds are. They're north of Interstate 70 this afternoon, and that is where I think we'll find the best chance of a few showers later on this evening. In fact, some of those showers are already developing to the west of Wichita and closer to Dodge City here over central Kansas. We'll keep an eye on those as they track in our direction. Otherwise, your afternoon forecast Looks like this 65 degrees, mostly cloudy An afternoon shower, not out of the question. Some wind gusts out of the south, possibly up to 20 miles per hour. So coming up here in just a couple of minutes, we're going to go in depth with future scan. Talk about that chance of rain and exactly when it will be and how it could pertain to the NFL draft. That's ahead. All right, looking forward to that. Thanks, Chad. So, of course, NFL Draft Week is finally here in Kansas City. We are just three days out from the first round, and right now the Carolina Panthers will pick first, and the Chiefs have the 31st overall pick, so they are the last of the first round. They have 10 picks overall this year. Over the weekend, crews were hard at work putting together the biggest draft stage in NFL history, and it has a lot of cool features like video boards. You can see the final product where the picks are announced starting on Thursday. A big question for fans. Where can they park for the draft? Well, our Martin Augustine was outside the draft setup to get you those answers. There are lots of places to park downtown, including here at the Arts District Garage beneath the Kaufman Performing Arts Center. Perfectly appropriate to park there as long as there's a spot. So you're going to want to do a little bit of research on where these parking spaces are and how to get to Union Station. First, where to park. Take a look at this map, and we have a link to that that we'll talk about later. Uh, it's created by uh, Visit KC, and it's got these great little mapping pointers on there. You'll click on those mapping pointers. It'll give you the specific address of that parking garage. It also has a list of parking garages where you can reserve a parking spot and a tool to help you do that. This same link will guide you through using the streetcar and ride KC buses to get you to Union Station. Once you've parked your car, there's park and ride service available from the West Bottoms Garage that will require pre-booking. You're also welcome to walk to Union Station. Now, it might be a long hike, but there'll be a lot of signs around downtown pointing you the correct way to get to Union Station. Now, we mentioned the link. There's a link up uh, uh, now on my Twitter page. You go to that Twitter page. You click on that link. You'll go right to that Visit KC uh, uh, map and all those features there so you can do your research on where to park. Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Well, don't forget about those street closings around the NFL draft site. We're going to see some big changes for streetcar service later this week. The Union Station stop will be closing starting Wednesday. So the last stop toward Union Station will be Crossroads. That's 19th and Main. On Thursday, service will be running a little bit longer from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Thursday and Friday, and then 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. on Saturday. So once you get off at 19th and Main, you are going to need to walk along Main to 20th and then along Grand to get to Pershing Road to get to Union Station. Union Station will be closing several attractions and services for the week of the draft starting today. Science City, the Arvin Gottlieb Planetarium, the Model Rail Gallery, the Escape Room and Museum of Illusions, plus the Post Office are all closed. The Extreme Green Theater will be closing on Wednesday, as will the West Yards Parking Garage. The station itself is closed to the public starting on Thursday. Despite all these closures, there's a special place where fans can get in the zone. Of course, we were talking about the draft fan zone. That's where we find our Rob Hughes this afternoon to explain what fans can do and expect there. 
We're giving you a sneak peek at the 2023 NFL Draft Experience here at the World War I Museum and Memorial. Taking a look at the driveway, you see all of the tents set up there and things are getting ready for the experience. There's what appears to be a locker room replica, one of those tents, and then you've got another tent right there to get some autographs as well. But probably what you really want to see is check out this beautiful stage right here. That is where the future NFL player is going to be called. There is their names are called. You look there at the lawn as we're looking south now towards Union Station where the stage is set up and certainly everywhere for blocks around this area you're going to see banners, you're going to see signs, all things NFL Draft and all things Kansas City. So certainly a fun experience, lots to do and lots to see here in Kansas City for the 2023 NFL Draft experience. We are in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Rob Hughes, KMBC 9 News. KBC 9 is your source for all things NFL Draft. Starting tonight, we're taking you behind the scenes of our Kansas City Welcome to Draft special airing at 630. We'll show you the impact the event will have on our city, the local prospects hopeful to hear their name called, and the best ways you can travel to the event, plus avoid all the crowds. Kansas City Welcomes the NFL Draft specials air today through Thursday at 630. And then stay tuned for live analysis after the draft. Late night coverage runs all week long after KMBC 9 News at 10 and after NFL Draft coverage. An issue at Disneyland is going viral. Next at noon, Sam, a piece of the happiest place on Earth turned into a towering inferno. Plus, we have video of the frightening scene on board an American Airlines plane as flames were seen shooting out of one of the engines. But leaders are saying cause the accident. One person is in the hospital fighting for his life after a fight with a family member in Olathe. This happened Sunday just before 6 o'clock. Police were called to a home near East Sheridan Street and South Windsor Road. Police found the man shot. He was taken to a hospital where he's listed in critical condition. Police are in talks with everyone involved. At last check, a manhunt is still underway for 21-year-old Javon Marquise Mitchell Locke. He was mistakenly let out of a jail on Thursday. He's one of three men charged with shooting three KCK police officers. That shooting happened earlier this month during an undercover fentanyl bust. The Platte County Sheriff's Office accidentally released him on misdemeanor charges. The other two suspects charged in this case are still in police custody. Mitchell Locke is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, please call 911. On Sunday, the KC Current honored Ralph Yarl, the 16 year old boy who was shot by a man after going into the wrong house. The current players wore armbands with Ralph's name on it just to bring attention to his story. The current would go on to win its first match in KC this season, a score of 2 0. Ralph, meanwhile, continues to recover 11 days after he was shot while trying to pick up his twin brothers from a house. He was supposed to go to Northeast 115th Terrace, but instead went to Northeast 115th Street and was shot in the head and the arm. 
The man charged with shooting him, 84-year-old Andrew Lester, is now charged with two felonies. He's pleaded not guilty. This afternoon, the American embassy in Sudan is closed as a deadly conflict continues between two opposing military forces. The White House says nearly 100 diplomats, embassy staff and their families were evacuated over the weekend, but around 16,000 Americans are still trapped there. The State Department says there are no immediate plans to evacuate them. One man says his two kids who are Sudanese American citizens are stranded there with their aunt. They're crying, they sleep, they have a nightmare. They said the military are, are coming, they will kill us. The Biden administration says it's considering other ways to help U.S. citizens stuck in the conflict zone, like helping them find escape routes. We're following some breaking news at noon. Fox News has cut ties with Tucker Carlson. This comes a week after Fox News settled a blockbuster defamation lawsuit with Dominion Voting Systems. Fox agreed to pay Dominion $787 million over the network spreading uh, election lies, their spread of election lies. Carson played a key role in that spread. Fox News thanked Carlson. His last show was on Friday. A new host has not yet been named, and Carlson has not commented on this decision. And there's another news anchor shakeup this afternoon. CNN announcing they parted ways with longtime host Don Lemon. He tweeted this morning that he's been terminated from the network. Lemon said he's, quote, stunned and learned the news from his agent claiming no one in management informed him of this decision. This comes just two months after he was criticized for his on-air comments about Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley. Bed Bath & Beyond filed for bankruptcy, which means thousands of jobs could be slashed. The company says its 360 stores and websites will stay open for the time being as they begin to shut down operations. The company employs 14,000 workers, and they had 32,000 employees in February last year. The retail giant has struggled with sales lagging behind competition like Target, Amazon, and Walmart. The company tried to cut costs by closing more than half their stores since late last year. Some sad news to share this afternoon. Dancing with the Stars judge Len Goodman has died. He served as the head judge on the show for 15 years until his retirement last November. Before that, he judged a British dance show. He was a champion dancer himself. Goodman was 78 years old. A moment at Disneyland is going viral this afternoon. An attraction caught fire and flames could be seen from all across the park. Check this out. Officials say a giant dragon caught fire during the park's phantasmic show. This was Saturday night. Anaheim Fire and Rescue quickly put the fire out and employees and guests had to be evacuated from that part of the park due to smoke and wind. Authorities are now trying to figure out what caused that fire. Now to the latest on the scares aboard two American Airlines flights. Flames shooting out of an engine after an apparent bird strike after it had just taken off. This was days after flames were seen on the wing of another American jet. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We had a bird strike in an engine failure. Terrifying moments on this American Airlines flight from Columbus to Phoenix Sunday morning. A possible bird strike causing the engine to burst into flames. Marnie Kalistad was a passenger on board during the chaos. Many people started crying and going into tears because we just didn't know if we were going to make it or not. Frankly, it was terrifying. She captured it all on her phone, fearing the worst. For some reason, I thought that that would help to show like what happened to my family if they found my phone or whatever. The plane eventually making a safe emergency landing back in Columbus. Experts say that kind of damage from a bird strike is uncommon. Bird strikes are not rare. They probably happen almost every day to some commercial airliner somewhere in the United States. What doesn't happen every day is that it causes the kind of damage that we saw on this aircraft where you actually actually see flames shooting out the back. The FAA now investigating. And just a few days before, flames breaking out in the engine of an American plane from Charlotte to Dallas before takeoff, turning right back around while taxiing. Everyone was trying to panic, but it was like we couldn't go anywhere either. So I think that was the biggest scare. American Airlines saying both incidents were due to mechanical issues, but thankfully no one was hurt. The NFL Draft is giving Kansas City a chance to show the world what it's made of. Next at noon, we'll show you how fans can get a taste of KC before they even get to the event. Plus, the Kansas City some strength in the City of Angels. Just not enough to grab a second win in this weekend's series. We'll show you the high points and where it all went wrong this weekend. And we have an unsettled week of weather with multiple rain chances, but not looking like a washout. We'll show you what hours have the best chance of rain over the next 24 coming up.
First Alert Weather. Over 100 years of combined experience to keep you safe. KNBC 9 News, leading the way. After the Royals had a late inning win Saturday in LA, they hoped to make it two on Sunday. The boys in blue showed some power early on. Breaking ball stayed up and MJ is all over it. Mike Trout goes to the wall Bam! and it's gone. There's MJ Melendez with the power in the first and the pass squatch had another in the sixth. Things looked really good for the Royals. But in the bottom half of the inning, Royals starting pitcher Jordan Lyles gives up three home runs back to back to back to Taylor Ward, Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. The Royals would add one more homer from Bobby Wood Jr., but it just wasn't enough. Kansas City loses four to three. Played good baseball. We got beat. Um, the first game we lost, you know, Otani pitched a heck of a game. Yesterday it was a great win, team win all the way around. Today was a game that could have gone either way, but that's that's what happens in the big leagues. It's tough to win, and it's tough to win consistently because the margin of error is so thin. The Royals lead the City of Angels for the desert as they begin a series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Brad Keller will be on the mound for the Royals. First pitch set for 840 tonight. Of course, it's draft week and football fans in Kansas City are ready. While the construction and road closures are causing some headaches, people we talk to say they're just happy KC is getting its time to shine. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real lit. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm excited for everybody to come down here and enjoy this experience here in Kansas City. Pretty special to have it. You know, uh, right after being a Super Bowl champions. I am really excited. Um, I didn't think I'd ever get to go to a draft, so it's really cool that it's right here in town and it's free and they're encouraging people to come. The NFL says the stage going up outside Union Station is the biggest ever built for a draft. So over the weekend, I stopped by the new KCI terminal and I spotted some draft theme signs you see pictured right here. We know thousands of football fans are going to be coming through the airport to experience the draft and for many, they're going to have that first experience with the new airport. A big problem we've seen at KCI is the pickup location. This video was taken by our crew Saturday night showing cars blocking the road leading to backups. This is a big test for the new KCI terminal this week, but the airport is a chance for visitors to get their first taste of our city. And of course, that first taste we're talking about Kansas City Barbecue. Lee Wood's own Meat Mitch BBQ is one of the local businesses that's expanded to the new airport. The barbecue joint slow cooks their meat on site and workers hope foodies, foodies excuse me, from near and far just appreciate the effort. Barbecue is an art. It's not, you know, three pieces of bologna and cheese and slide it down. It's 15 hour cooks. It's cooked. It's trimming properly. It's executing. 
Meat Mitch Barbecue is inside Concourse A. It's over by the Fountain Sculpture. There are several other barbecue options at the airport, including the Made for KC Barbecue Experience. That's where champion pitmasters compete to operate for an entire year. It just smells great inside the airport. Starting tomorrow, the National World War One Memorial and Museum will have a special display of poppies. This will be on the Liberty Memorial Tower. The poppies are a symbol of remembrance and a tribute to veterans. The display will last throughout the course of the draft. Just something to look out for there. And with Kansas City in the spotlight, you can, of course, count on KBC 9 and sports for all of your draft coverage. We're going to have all the information you need to know as the clock ticks down to the first pick and all the way through that final pick on Saturday. You can also go to KBC.com and search draft for all of our coverage. And, you know, we are gearing up getting you ready for the draft. We've got specials airing tonight. Uh, both at 6.30 and at 10.35. Chad, we want everyone to be as prepared as possible, and you need to prepare us for the weather, too. That's right, including in the weather department. So I want to take you first over to Thursday, the first day of the draft, and walk you hour by hour. This is dinner time at 5 o'clock. Temperatures are in the lower 60s. We'll have mostly cloudy skies here throughout the evening. Start time of the draft at 7 o'clock. It's cool and dry, so you may want to bring a jacket or a light coat because once the sun sets, as you get ready to head home, or maybe you stay a little bit later for the follow-up wake, concert temperatures down into the lower 50s so it will be kind of a chilly evening but dry live look outside from our city view camera this afternoon shows some higher clouds rolling in 60 degrees southwest winds at 11 miles per hour gusting to 22 miles per hour that southerly wind starting to warm us up in spots like Lawrence at 64 66 in Ottawa on the Missouri side some more low to mid 60s it is 63 in Warrensburg and 64 in Clinton. Before the day is done, we'll find more building clouds. South winds continuing with some gusts up to 20 miles per hour. Mid to upper 60s on the Kansas side, mid to low 60s on the Missouri side. And here in Kansas City, we'll call it 65 degrees. Should be a pretty pleasant day for us. I do want to take you through future scan because as we get into this evening, these clouds will continue to roll in. It will be warmer than yesterday, so again, pleasant. But notice across northern Missouri, and parts here of central Kansas, there's going to be the opportunity for some light showers. It's not going to be a washout. If you fall under the rain, it may be briefly moderate at times. That'll fade away into early Tuesday morning and then by the afternoon, maybe a few light showers and again, a mostly cloudy sky. It's going to be really difficult to pinpoint down exactly where the rain is going to fall Monday through Thursday, but most of the time will be dry, mostly cloudy couple of passing showers, but not a washout. That will change Friday to Saturday. We have better confidence of a storm system that's going to move in. That's going to bring us periods of rain and also cooler than normal temperatures throughout much of this week ahead of that storm system. Let's show it to you here on our nine day forecast. First of all, afternoon shower today. Temperatures in the mid 60s. Another passing shower on Tuesday, low 60s. Maybe another raindrop or two Wednesday night into Thursday, Thursday evening. NFL draft is dry. Here comes the rain for Friday and into Saturday. Much cooler on Saturday, mid 50s. And yes, it could be wet during the NFL draft, both on Friday night, maybe into Saturday night. We're dry for Sunday into early next week.
Well, that is our time for KMBC 9 News at noon. Be sure to join us today for KMBC 9 News at 4 o'clock. And remember, it is NFL Draft Week. We are gearing you up for all the excitement. Our live daily specials air tonight starting at 6.30. Have a great day.